Hello, my name is Nafar, and I'm glad to have the opportunity to introduce our project. Not all those who wander are lost. Our project demonstrates an Alzheimer patient's experience of the world. We are a group that came from different fields, design, neuroscience, and computer science. We joined together in the making of this project. What do we talk about when we talk about Alzheimer's? An irreversible progressive brain disorder that slowly destroys memory, orientation, and eventually the most basic cognitive functions. Currently, there is no disease modifying treatments that are available. Challenges for both non professional and family provided care and standard medically oriented care. Caregivers tend to develop compassion fatigue, interfering with their ability to care for the patient. Our project's objecti objectives is to develop a VR interactive experience that uses cinematic techniques to enhance embodiment, which will allow caregivers to experience Alzheimer's disease-related signs and symptoms, consequently increasing perspective taking and empathy, thus potentially mitigating empathy fatigue. The VR experience was designed to simulate a day in the life of an elderly woman suffering from AD as she follows a daily routine. As participants inevitably fail to perform activity of daily living, they experience disorientation in space, time, and person, characteristic to Alzheimer's disease symptoms. The first example gives an experience of misjudgment. Here is a top view of the woman's house. During the first episode, the woman gets a phone call from her daughter who asks her to look at the reminder in her notebook. There it's written, boil the water. She goes to the kitchen and turn on the kettle. Then she gets another reminder to look for a medicine in the bathroom. While she tries to find it, she hears an alarm and runs back to the kitchen to look what happened. Let's see it in a movie. Let's see another example that gives an experience of disorientation in space. During this episode, the woman is asked to get out of the house, but when she tries the way through the entrance door, she finds herself in her bedroom again and feels disoriented. Let's watch it. It is important to mention that by now the participants have established a good idea about the layout of the house, so trying to leave and getting to the bedroom again is very disorienting. Creating expectations and subverting them is the basic principle we apply to create disorientation. Beyond the physical feelings of lack of orientation, we want to emphasize the emotional aspects experienced by patients. Our last example is about disorientation in time and person. In this episode that I will show you, the woman watches TV news and she thinks that the news reporter is her deceased husband. When she finds a letter from the past, she is invited to meet someone. She goes out and starts wondering. Let's see it. שלום רב לכם. המשטרה מבקשת את עזרת הציבור בחיפושי אחר הקשישה לאה וייס, בת ה-79. גרובתי, אני לא מפסיק לחשוב עלייך. אני דואג לך. תלך.
אמא, איפה את? באתי לאסוף אותך לאזכרה של אבא ואת לא בבית. למה את לא בבית? לאן הלכת? אני לא יודעת מה יהיה איתך. Here we've seen both disorientation in time and person. As the participant confused the news reporter with her husband, the picture of him was scattered throughout the house. And disorientation in time, as he thought the old letter was relevant and having forgotten, he had passed away. I want to briefly present our initial experimental evaluation of the VR experience. To validate the VR contribution to perspective taking, we've compared the answers to everyday cognition questionnaire, a well-established neuropsychological questionnaire. We compared between 281 patients acquired from the ADNI database, presented in purple, 15 participants with no personal experience in AD who experienced the VR, presented in orange, and 15 participants with no personal experience in AD who viewed a graduate level lecture on AD, presented in gray. We performed statistical tests to examine whether healthy participants have underwent VR or lecture, could answer from the perspective of patients, and produce answers similar to those of patients. Performing ANOVA and postdoc analysis, we see that participants who viewed the standard lecture significantly overestimated the ECOG scores compared to AD patients. Participants who underwent VR showed no significant difference compared to patients. Here we use questionnaire to evaluate the impact of our VR experience on the participants. We had control sample of 55 participants who answered. The first graph shows participants' evaluation of their understanding, means comprehension of the task, conceptualize, means comprehensions of the cognitive aspects of the disease, for example, the various types of disorientation and emphasizing with the emotional aspects of the task, all on scale of 1 to 10, with 10 being the maximum. And then we seg segmented the results by personal experience with AD, seeing that while subjects equally understood instructions and were able to conceptualize the, the signs and symptoms of the disease, participants with personal experience with AD had significantly stronger emotional response, which is suggesting this experience is potentially effective specifically on caregivers. In the future, we plan to make evaluation of the experience impact that will include caregivers or prospective experiment with medical students. I would like to thank our team, Gregory Peters Feinstein, Yoel Levy, Chofit Bata, and Professor Yair Bartal. And I would also like to thank Daphna Golan Shemesh, Professor Shachar Razi, and Shachar Oz, And special thanks to our actors, Ronit Lerushpak and Rafi Kalmar, who are welcome to ask questions in the QA slot or directly by email. Thank you all.